Upstairs? Yes. Uh, which temperament were you using yeah. today and why? Um, yeah, so, you know, this is just my, what, what well temperament. I mean, it's... If he doesn't have a name, right? I mean, it's probably close to a Velotti, what they call a Velotti tuning. Uh, if you look and uh, go on the web and look up well temperaments, you know, it's close to that. Maybe also closer to a Thomas Young, a later 18th century tuning. Um, I'm playing in a, a great variety of keys in a program like this, so I can't, you know, the thing about tuning is that if you tune so that it, the tuning is absolutely amazingly perfect for one key, it will be absolutely amazingly horrible for another key, right? Um, so, so the idea of well temperament is to have a tuning in which you can play in all keys, but they're all different and they're structured around C major. So, you know, I tuned C and E here, the third. That's your that's your norm. Always calls it your statement of faith. I tuned it at about three beats a second. All right. On the modern piano, an equal temperament, that would be at seven beats a second, you know? Uh, and, then, and then I work my way out from there. You try to tune pure fifths on the black keys so that the fifths, you know, E flat to B flat, and those, those fifths are almost pure. The fifths on the white keys, on the, you know, the long keys, right, are, tend to be highly tempered. Uh, and you get kind of a slow vibrato from them. And I really think that the, this music lights up in that, that color field. So, sorry I can't really lay it out for, in front of everybody here. We can't like, go through it, but I hope that helps. Yeah, last question. Does the harpsichord yeah. reappear kind of in the 20th century? Oh yeah, do, he says, does that, it reappear? That, that's a great, of course, and that's why we're here. <laughs> and, and why, yeah, and of course it reappears. You know, in the 19th century, Hardly anybody was playing them except the Luddites in the woods, you know, right? Well, you know, they're out there naked playing the harpsichord. And yeah, you know, right? Well, there were. They're, in England, they always have those great things. Uh, but, you know, uh, but uh, the, what happens is in the early 20th century, a great pianist named Wanda Landowska uh, decides she's going to pretty much give her life to performing not on the piano, but on the harpsichord. So she gets this mon monstrous thing built by the Play L Company. It's a great big iron frame with heavy leather quills in it, uh, you know, and it has a big sound she can play in, in, in concert halls that are designed for 19th century consumption, large, large halls. She's a magnificent player, uh, just a, a captivating performer, and she tours the world for, for 30 years or so and, make, and records piles of Bach and Scarlatti and Mozart, um, and she was just fearless. She just... You know, she's the Jackie Robinson of the harpsichord. She just said, like, I'm going to do it. You can't stop me. <laughs> you know? uh, and and uh, you know, for, and as a woman, too. And, I mean, there were very few women on the stage in the early 20th century. So she's doing the double whammy there, you know? Uh, there were always great women players, but they were not allowed to go on the stage. And so, so she did it all. Uh, and and uh, sure, and that, I grew up listening to her recordings and just and loving them. Yeah, Wanda Landowska uh, was her name. Uh, yeah, and uh, look her up on YouTube. It, you know, it's, she's a great character. Okay. Well, we'll stop. I know people have places to go. Thank you, guys. <laughs>